So, I mean, when LibreOffice started, I think there had been a whole load of reasons why uh, we couldn't improve the source code. And those all suddenly went away. And suddenly there's just this flowering of, well, we should fix that. It's broken, let's, let's fix it. And uh, it was just really, really good then to see this, this huge, huge cleanup effort get underway and, you know, just, just so much has improved. You know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's all little things, but actually, you know, little things really annoy you after a while. And they also make the code harder to, harder to read. So, actually, now the code is just so much easier to get into and so much better structured, so much safer to develop in. Because previously, it was lots of things were coupled together in very non-obvious ways. And now, you know, with proper smart pointers and real reference counseling, it's much harder to go wrong. So I think people can feel confident they can contribute without being too worried. And we can accept people's patches more easily too, because you can, you can skim through it and see it. it's going to work. Yeah, so we've done some work there. So there are some presentations on sort of basic structural overviews from top down and graphs and so on. And again, I think there's a difference there to how originally it was presented. So, uh, you know, originally, uh, I think OpenOffice was presented as something that's impossibly difficult to understand, you know, and the, and, the, and the graphs were like, you know, whole walls, you know, we are so awesome, look at us. But actually, the complexity isn't that bad. And if you do a few little things, you can make the graph look relatively simple, relatively easy to understand. And then, you know, uh, so you can explain the structure. There's good, good slide decks around that. There's good slide decks about the basic types, the strings, and the you know, widgets, and so on. So it's actually, you know, I, I think any moderately competent uh, C++ program can sit down and start to struggle and, and make real progress in, you know, in, a, in a day or so uh, in, in a particular area. And of course, we have easy hacks then to try and make that easier so that we'll point you at the area. So you don't have to go, oh, I want to fix this, this problem, but I don't know where it is. You know, so we're eager to help mentor people and, and show them where, where they can go and struggle for a while and, and make a real difference, actually. One of the challenges we face is trying to get people to use ODF everywhere, and open standards and open formats are, uh, I think, very important. Um, but <clears throat> if you have to install software on your machine to be able to read the document you've just been emailed, life is not so great. But if you happen to have a browser, you know, and you can follow a link, and you can see that document, and you can edit you know, online in your browser with, with a, a, you know, a native ODF uh, application on the other end, and ideally collaborate and interact with other people, that's a, that's a really rich, uh, rich proposition. So that was our vision, really. Um, to, to bring you know, sort of interchangeable open standards to everybody in their browsers. So you don't have to install LibreOffice, you, everyone has access to it. Um, so, so that was a vision Collab had, I guess, and so we spent a lot of time uh, you know, building product around that, obviously in the marketplace, I think. You know, having, a, having an online uh, solution is really vital. We see lots of users with a whole, you know, <coughs> as our customers have a whole, whole, let, let me just show you my t-shirt, you know, I have the, uh, you know, the Calabra, you know. Ta -da, look at this, look at that, Calabra Online, yes, little Superman underneath. Um, but uh, we have a whole load of customers, different things. So people using PCs, I think, are still, you know, still users out there with individual installs. I think we see terminal servers quite a lot, which is sort of halfway to remoting your desktop, better, easier to manage. And of course, online and then you know, Android devices. And we've been involved in you know, all of these domains, trying to improve, improve LibreOffice to make them work there. But I think, yeah, so, so online is, is really <clears throat> a very, very rich proposition. Of course, you can host the data on your own premise. You can be sure where the network traffic goes to and from it from a compliance issue. That's very, very nice. So, say, banking customers or something like that. They're really not very interested in even, you know, like, yes, it's in the EU, but I want it in my building where I can see it. And I, I want to know who's connected to that network. So, you know, and if, if someone is misconnected, the alarm bells sound and people run and, you know, yeah, it, it's bad. And so in these, these kind of very compliance-oriented industries, so pharmaceuticals, you know, banking and so on, then, then we can do some really great stuff to... Uh, to improve things uh, for those customers, so they can be sure that you know they've got that stuff in, in conjunction with all sorts of other people. So, you know, own cloud, next cloud, Podio, C file. You know, there's, there's a great long list. I'm going to forget at top partners' names and get in trouble now. But you know, we've just been overwhelmed with how many people want to partner with us, uh, which is very helpful. One of the things we did is tiled rendering. So for the mobile devices. Um, it turns out that they're very good at flipping um, textures. So your, your ideal texture is really a square, uh, and you, know, you can move it around on this whole load of them. And so we did some work there for the Document Foundation, actually funded by our donors, um, to make it work on Android. And actually, the same stuff is then used uh, for LibreOffice Online. So, so quite a lot of that stuff, it's basically bringing a whole load of tiles for your document. So the Chrome and the menus and things uh, run inside your browser, natively JavaScript. But the actual document itself is then rendered on the server. And so there's a protocol to do that. So. <clears throat> I think there have been quite a lot of changes to LibreOffice over time to make that work well. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's a huge amount of work in LibreOffice Online. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, we've been working on it for two years with a team of uh, five to 10 people the whole time. So it's, it's really a big investment from, from, from Collabora. But um, 
yeah, you know, quite a lot of the infrastructure is there. And the great thing is you've got this wonderful LibreOffice rendering engine, you know, 25 years of file format work, interoperability fixing, rendering improvements, and so on. So every improvement you do in LibreOffice then also works in LibreOffice Online and, and helps improve rendering and fidelity. All sorts of things, you know, uh, more performance, more stability, you know, um, uh, scaling to huge, huge uh, sets. And that's, I think, one of the things that LibreOffice Online can do really well is scale to large, large numbers of users if, you know, for enterprise use. Um, I think richer functionality, you know, so at the moment we have very basic editing. Um, so you can do basic styles, basic, you know, commenting, basic this. But making that just much, much richer, I think. There's, there's really no reason why we can't bring almost the whole functionality of this suite to the uh, the client, but uh, you know, uh, we, we do what our customers like at Collabora, and so far we're you know 99% of the commits. So you know, if that's what we do, uh, we, we please please those guys. I use both VI and Emacs, although Emacs would be my preferred uh, preferred one. And uh, unfortunately, I have to use Windows quite a bit, so I end up using uh, well, actually VI more frequently on Windows. Uh, Visual Studio, unfortunately, there. Occasionally, I use Xcode if I have to, because we do some stuff on the Mac. Um, yeah. I don't know. Emacs is where I feel at home, but that's just because I'm old. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the young people are all using, you know, whatever's latest. Uh, G edit. Oh dear, no. But it's it's a real professional uh, tool, and there are lots of other professional tools out there. All I'd say to people on this thing is, don't use G edit. Don't use Notepad. I've seen people programming in Notepad, and that just makes me sad because there's so much richness and and you know goodness to a real professional tool. So. So one of the interesting things about processes is they're getting much, much, much wider. So there are various limits to uh, you know, silicon and, and clock speeds and, and so on. You see that you know, the gigahertz race is topping out, four gigahertz, that, that sort of speed. But the number of threads is going up massively. And I'm, I'm very excited. One of our partners, AMD, uh, Calabra, is, uh, is shipping in Horizon quite shortly. And it's you know, like 16 threads by default. So now, nowadays, if you're single threaded, you're wasting 93% of your CPU. Um, so, so how can we improve concurrency and do that in a safe way? And there's a lot of people working on this problem in free software, Rust, new languages, you know. And so where can we use that in LibreOffice to best effect? I, I think it's, it's an exciting field and also a risky one. It's at the edge of, you know, making computer science work well. And I think that's, uh, yeah, so, so that's what I'm talking about, trying to encourage people to get involved in doing crazy, thready stuff uh, with LibreOffice. So we've already done some good work there, but there's more, much more to do, I think. Yeah, no, there's lots of exciting things going on in LibreOffice. I think it's 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 a really encouraging project. It's growing. It's, there's fun people like yourself getting involved and you know doing doing good things around it. And it's it's just really a rewarding place to get involved and, and to to make your blue for freedom. And more than that, there's now so many people that can use it. You know, previously we had 100 120 million users using it. We think, but now with LibreOffice Online, we can start to grow that massively. We don't have to get them to download anything, install anything. We just have to provide them access uh, to this thing. And so, in co combination with our partners, um, you know, we're growing that user base massively. And so any, any small fix or improvement that you make in LibreOffice, now you can be confident, is helping vastly more people than, it's, than it could have done before. So I think that's fantastic.